Hey biology, welcome to your presentation on DNA, also known as deoxyribonucleic acid. We've talked about DNA before, now we're going to really talk a little bit more um, in depth, more deeply about um, what DNA is, what its shape and structure is, and um, what it does in our bodies. So let's review a little bit about prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Every cell contains genetic material in the form of DNA. This is review. In prokaryotic cells, the DNA is contained within a single circular chromosome and is exposed to the rest of the cell. That means it's floating around down here. We, we've seen this picture before, like kind of like spaghetti in a, um, just kind of around in the cytoplasm. You guys have heard this before, this is all review. Now again, if you remember from this picture down here, um, although it looks like a bunch of spaghetti, if you took that DNA out of there and spread it out, it would be a single circular chromosome, kind of like a rubber band that's all jammed up in there together. In eukaryotes, the nucleus contains the genetic material, which is also in the form of DNA. While only eukaryotes keep their DNA in a nucleus, it's important to remember that every cell uses DNA. Every cell has genetic material, both prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells. So again, this is all review. DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. Deoxyribo comes from the name of the sugar that's used in the molecule, and nucleic acid comes from the fact that this is one of our biomolecules. This is DNA, which is a biomolecule. It's a nucleic acid. This down here is a key idea. Y'all did not do so well with this one on your exam, and we kind of went through that last time. A nucleic acid, which is one of our four biomolecules, is a long repeating chain of nucleotides. We're going to talk more about a nucleotide um, as we go forward here. Every nucleotide has three basic parts. It has a phosphate group. Notice that the phosphate group, the word is in green. Do you see this right here? The word phosphate group is in green. You're gonna see this highlighted in green here in just a sec. A sugar named deoxyribose and one of the four nitrogen bases. Okay, so check this out. This is our phosphate group right here. Notice that I am using a green color to put a box around the phosphate group. This is our phosphate group right here, okay? The sugar named deoxyribose, which is where the name for deoxyribonucleic acid comes from, here is our sugar. Notice that I am using red to highlight our sugar. Our nitrogen base is here. Notice that I am using blue to highlight our nitrogen base. Our nitrogen base words are in blue, and I am highlighting that part of the molecule with a blue box as well. So again, our phosphate, there it is with the P. This is our sugar. There's our sugar right there. And our nitrogen base is here in blue. Every nucleotide has a phosphate, a sugar, and a nitrogen base, and in DNA, the sugar is deoxyribose. This is gonna come become important as we move forward. Okay. The four nitrogen bases in DNA are adenine, which is shown with an A, thymine, which is shown with a T, guanine, which is shown with a G, and cytosine, which is shown with a C. A, T, G, C are the four nitrogen bases in DNA. And again, here's our nucleotide structure down here. So we have our phosphate group, we have our sugar, which in DNA is deoxyribose, and one of four nitrogen bases that could either be an A, a T, a G, or a C. So here's my nitrogen bases, and it can be one of those four. Here's a quick question. Why do you think those nitrogen bases are called nitrogen bases? Well, because they all contain the element nitrogen. 
and nitrogen is shown on the periodic table of the elements as an N. So when you see an N in a molecule, there it is, 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 right? It means that the molecule contains nitrogen. As you can see in the diagrams, two chains of nucleic acids join together to form a double-stranded molecule of DNA. Here's the first strand, like this, and here's the second strand woven around the first strand. They twist together into a double-stranded molecule. If you were to flatten this molecule out, it would look like this down here. Okay, this is strand number one, this is strand number two. And they fit together down the middle. These two strands spiral around one another to create a shape that we call a double helix. Double means two, helix means twist. So there are two twists in this molecule. The outside of the DNA molecule is called the sugar phosphate backbone. That is where our phosphates and our sugar groups are located. Okay, and let's revisit the structure of nu nucleotide real quick here. Here's my phosphate, here's my sugar. Here's my phosphate, here's my sugar, right? Same deal over here, sugars and phosphates. This is the part that we're talking about right now. This is the outside of the molecule. So if you are looking over here, this is the ribbon that you're seeing, the outside part of it, okay? The sugar phosphate backbone gives the DNA molecule its shape and its structure. So if you were to think of this molecule as a ladder, that would be the sides of the ladder, the two sides that hold the ladder up. It gives the ladder the shape and the structure. The nitrogen bases, these are our nitrogen bases, there's our A, T's and C's and G's, are on the inside of the molecule, right? They are inside that double helix. The nitrogen bases are how the information, the genetic information is coded into the DNA. So that would be this part in the middle the parts that kind of fit together. So again, let's talk about that ladder. So the sugar phosphate backbone is the sides of the ladder. So our nitrogen bases would be like the rungs of the ladder, the part that you would climb up to get up to the top of the ladder. So sugar phosphate backbone are the, are the sides that give it the shape and structure. And the nitrogen bases are like the rungs, the inner part of the ladder. The information from, for, uh, in DNA is a blueprint for every cell. So what's a blueprint? You may not have heard that word before. A blueprint is a plan. If an architect makes a blueprint for a building, it means he or she is making a plan for the entire building. DNA is the information. It's the plan for every structure in your body. The information in DNA is found in the sequence that means the order of nitrogen bases, the order in which they are written. This information is used to make proteins. So the sequence of nitrogen bases makes proteins, and that is according to a universal genetic code. So one more time, DNA is called a blueprint because the information to make proteins is found in the sequence of nitrogen bases. This is a universal genetic code. All organisms use the same ATCG. Now they're not in the same order, but they use the same four nitrogen bases. Every cell uses the information in DNA to make proteins in the same way. And this is a key idea. This is what I just mentioned in the previous slide. Every cell is using the same four nitrogen bases in the same way. Now again, the bases are not in the same order because if they were, we'd all be the same organism, but we're not. The DNA is translated using the genetic code where a specific sequence of nitrogen bases codes for an amino acid in the protein being made. So let's take a step back. We know that proteins 
are made of amino acids because we learned that when we talked about biomolecules. So the DNA has the letters A, T, C, G, and the order of those letters, the sequence of those letters, translates um, into a genetic code that codes for a protein. So the sequence of those nitrogen bases codes for an amino acid, and those amino acids string together to make a protein. All living things use the same genetic code. Everything on this planet uses the same four letters. Again, not in the same order, but the same four bases, A, T, C, and G. The genetic code is common to all, from the fish in the sea to the mold on the wall. You're going to hear me say this about um, probably 800,000 times. This is a little way to remember that all of the organisms on this planet use the same four letters. And there's going to be a lot more rhymes like this you're going to see. The genetic code is common to all is the key idea here. Every living thing uses the same four letters, A, T, and C, and G. And by the way, that's the same wording that the state of Texas says that you need to know on your STAR test, so you might as well learn it. Um, it's a universal or a common genetic code. Okay, so let's talk about chromosomes. You have heard the word chromosome before. Um, when we talked about DNA, we talked about chromosomes. Uh, we talked about them being a single circular chromosome in a prokaryote or many linear chromosomes in a eukaryote. DNA is not found in many little pieces. Instead, large amounts of DNA are packaged together into structures called chromosomes. Human cells hold 46 chromosomes, and each of those chromosomes contains thousands of genes. Again, so the, the, there's 46 chromosomes in a human cell, but each one of those chromosomes contains thousands and thousands of genes. The complete set of chromosomes with all of the organism's DNA in it is known as the organism's genome. So what's a gene? Genes are sections of DNA that code for proteins. So again, remember, we're going um, from a chromosome, right, which contains thousands of genes, um, and each of those genes contains the information used to code for an amino acid, and the amino acids string together to make proteins. I like this picture right here. This is a good picture. So I wanna kinda draw your attention to this picture. Um, so this is DNA. Here's our double helix. Everybody can see that right there. There's our DNA. If you were to um, take a chromosome and you were to kind of grab the tail of it and pull on it, kind of like a thread on a sweater, you could pull this DNA out. And again, each one of these little pieces of DNA codes for a single protein. It's a gene. So this would be a gene here. Here's another gene here. And each one of those has a sequence of nitrogen bases that when it's um, decoded, codes for an amino acid, which codes, when the amino acids get together, they code for proteins. All right, so let's talk about the A and the T and the G and C and how they fit together. Um, this is important. The state uh, thinks it's important enough to put it on your star, so we're going to talk about it. The nitrogen bases between the two strands, remember strand one and strand two that we talked about before? They um, pair in a very specific way and they can only pair in a specific way. A will always pair with T and G will always pair with C, always. They cannot fit together in any other way. The chemical bonds don't work. And you guys are gonna be doing some practice on this today. A pairs with T and G pairs with C. And if you look at this molecule down here, you can see that it is following those instructions. A pairs with T and G pairs with C. Okay, so um, Chargraff's rule and Chargraff's ratios, we will actually do see the, a little video on this um, when we get together in person the next time. So we're gonna skip over this slide. So let's compare the letters uh, in the pairs. How can you remember that these go together? And it's important that you do because they're going to ask you this kind of stuff on the star. So again, A pairs with T and G pairs with C. The letters that are made with straight lines, see the straight lines in A and T, go together. And the letters that are made with curved lines go together. 
So that's a way that you can that that can help you remember it. A pairs with T, those are both straight line letters, and G pairs with C, and those are both both curved line letters.